question, Anne, the problem of free will affects all different kinds of people. Scientists, philosophers, uh, theologians, everybody gets their hand in it. As a philosopher of physics, where's the problem of free will? For a philosopher of physics, especially one who wants to take the physical picture of the world seriously, that is the picture of the world that's given to us by our most fundamental theories in physics, and who wants to conceive of we, ourselves, as just part of a world that's somehow implicitly captured in the description that physics gives us. The problem appears in the form of a co an apparent conflict between the determinism of the fundamental laws, or if the fundamental laws aren't in fact deterministic, then at least the quasi-determinism of the fundamental laws at the classical level, that is at the level of macroscopic structure, um, to understand how that's compatible with our view of ourselves as making our own decisions and as those decisions of those decisions as up to us. When, as William James put it, fate seems to hang in the balance, if everything is decided in the here and now, how to reconcile that with the fact that according to the fundamental physical laws, if they are deterministic or quasi-deterministic, everything was really decided the moment that the particles were put in their places at the very beginning of time. Because at that point you had an initial condition and you had all the rules how these particles and fields were supposed to interact, so theoretically that everything then would be uh, be set and you could predict that if you had a very large if not infinite intelligence. Exactly right. Good. And even with the so-called indeterminism of quantum physics where you have probabilistics, mm -hmm. does that help you with the problem? It doesn't help at all and it doesn't help for two reasons. One reason is that most of the indeterminism that there is at the fundamental level is washed out mm -hmm. by the time that we get to the level of macroscopic structures like us interacting with the macroscopic environment. So that's not going to help if we're just looking at the classical. Um, so the macroscopic structure of the world it doesn't help um, in another way because even if you thought that there were microphysical processes in the brain whose effects were amplified so that they actually expressed themselves in the movements of the bodies, well, to think that a decision hinged on a microscopic effect in the brain wouldn't seem to put us anymore in the position of controlling um, our behaviors. Especially if those uh, those uh, micro uh, uh, activities are indeterministic and That's random. That's exactly right. If they're ch w why is randomness any more helpful to free will than determinism? Exactly. Yeah. The problem there is that if you want, we want to think that we are in control, right? right. right? And a microscopic random event in the brain makes a microscopic <laughs> random event in the brain con right. in control, not we ourselves. So the problem is getting the self into the causal chain. So someone who privileges physics, as you set as the, as, as the key uh, parameter here, recognizing that neither determinism nor quantum physics indeterminism can solve the problem, many people do that would say, therefore, free will is an illusion. It's popular nowadays <laughs> um, to express what science has shown us about ourselves in negative terms. So people, you'll hear all over the place in the literature in philosophy of mind, in the literature in, free, uh, in, uh, in physics, um, that the existence of the self is an illusion because if we look at the you know kind of description given in fundamental physics, we don't find selves, we don't find free will, therefore it's all an illusion. I actually think that's the wrong way to express um, what we've actually found out about ourselves in the same way that saying that well you know if we look at the fundamental level of description we don't find solidity we find that you know most things that we call solid are by and large empty space mm -hmm. I think that's the wrong way to describe but what we find is that when we look more closely at the fine-grained structure of matter right solidity isn't just solid matter. Solidity has a fine-grained structure, a lot of which turns out to be empty space. So I think, I like to think of what we've learned about ourselves um, as deepening our understanding of what the things that we describe in terms, in intuitive terms, as freedom are. So are you making a broad analogy between free will and the solidity of objects, both of which have a, an, an apparentness to them, but, but when you understand the physical properties, you can see how one is not dependent upon the other, but is 
is uh, a totally emergent from the other. That's exactly, yeah, yeah. that's right. So I would, I would uh, go along with you. Mm -hmm. I'm on the same bus, but then I want to get off the bus before you do because um, is solidity, the concept of solidity, the same thing as the concept of free will? Because solidity you can kind of explain in terms of electromagnetic forces, or etc. I mean, you, you can come up with why you have solidity at a macroscopic level, mm -hmm. uh, where you don't have it at the, at the microscopic level. But you can't do that with free will. Well, I think that you can. Um, in both cases, though, let me say one thing. Um, that we do have to revise our ideas about free will. So it's not as though um, we can take our collection of intuitive beliefs about free will. Okay. Um, and there's going to be something that perfectly satisfies that. I think, you know, we have a lot of very naive, intuitive ideas okay, about so, free will. So you are deflating free will to fit your physics? I don't think of it as deflating. I think what we do end up doing um, is capturing the important core of our practices, for example, holding people morally responsible, and our practices of praising and blaming people and distinguishing free acts from unfree acts. We can preserve all of that, but we don't preserve a lot of the sort of little mental pictures that go along with it, in particular the idea that we somehow outside the causal order, a transcendent, indivisible, non-material particular that's residing somehow over and above or in the brain and that controls action. Those, I think, that little mental picture, we do away with, but it's, it's unnecessary to preserve the important core of the practices. Those, I think, can be preserved and those are, that's what I mean by the difference between sort of deepening our ideas about free will um, and um, sort of saying that free will is an illusion. It's recapture the important core, and that's what really matters in free will.